Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. We've got a number of folks here today that I haven't seen for quite a while. <laughs> good, good to see all. Um, I'm just here to make the final announcement for the annual congregational meeting, which is next Sunday following the church service. Um, one of the things that we wanted to emphasize today was, well, first of all, that we're going to do a walkthrough of that right after this service to make sure we've got all of the technology that we're ready for it for next Sunday. The other thing is for folks that are going to attend in person, we'll make sure that we would have them register uh, for, the, for the service in advance if they can, make sure that their name is on the list. And for the folks that are going to be watching the service online, we're going to ask them to make sure that they're identified on the screen so that we can record all of these things. So we're looking forward to doing that next Sunday. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, we are so happy to be joined together by the love of God. And I also have one quick announcement is that of uh, the outreach project or opportunity that we do have to serve in partnership with YES. I am told we are collecting bottles. And if you have some of the bottles that you would recycle, bring them over here, we'll do that for you for free. And uh, when we sell them, the proceeds will be shared with, yes, an organization that works here in Edmonton to invest in the future of our youth. And now I would like to invite you to join me in the gathering words that are going to be projected on the screen. Filled with the hope to which Christ has called us, we lay our gifts and our very selves 
at God's altar. Oh, now, since we are at the altar of God, we would like to sing, but remain seated, seated for a little while, because I would like to teach us the melody of this song. It has been long since we, we did that. So, Bob, let's go to the refrain first. Can I please get the key? Oh. So it goes like this. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. One more time. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. Let's hear you now. Let's go again. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. Now, let's go to Spain. Spanish now. Now, listen to this slowly. Mire que bueno, que bueno es. Mire que bueno, que bueno es. Together. Mire que bueno, que bueno es. First verse, let's try. Let's. Now, look out. Now, let's go with the verse. Look at how good it is for us to be here all together. It is like the precious old trans from Aaron's head and be One more time. You can't see? You forgot? I forgot too. Let's try again. Oh, look at how good it is. Oh, look at how good it is for us to be here all together. It is like precious all we transform parents' head and beard. Okay, thank you. Now we have learned it. In case you forget maybe to sing Luke, leave the next word for the other person. They will sing it. Whichever one you remember, just sing it. Now, let us all sing together with the love of God. Oh, Lord, We have traveled different roads of life to be here today, but we all share one guide. We come from different backgrounds and traditions, yet we share one faith. We are, each of us, 
unique and precious to God. And we are members of one family, God's family. We have different dreams and doubts, yet our hearts beat with one hope. We are graced with different talents, so we may offer them in service to God and to one another. God and parent of us all, who is above all and through all and in all, we welcome you this morning as a patchwork collection of persons. Take us and quilt us together as your community of faith. Like pieces of cloth, take our word and songs and prayers, our thoughts and inner hungers, and join them all together into a new and living fabric, the purpose of which is to cover and color your world, or at least our corner in it, with humility, gentleness, patience, and love. God in community, holy in one, equip us for the work of ministry as we pray together with one voice and one heart, as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter four, verses one to 16. Unity and the maturity in the body of Christ. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, 
making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip God's people for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Our second reading this morning is from Psalm 133. How wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. It is like the precious anointing oil, oil running down from Aaron's head and beard down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing, life that never ends.
Our final reading this morning is from John chapter 17, verses 6 to 11 and 20 to 26. I have made you known to those you gave me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. I gave them the message that you gave me and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and my glory is shown through them. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one just as you and I are one. I pray not only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of, your, of their message. I pray that they may also all be one. Father, may they be in us, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be one so that the world will believe that you sent me. I gave them the same glory you gave me so that they may be one, just as you and I are one. In them and you in me, so that they may be completely one in order that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them as you love me. Father, you have given them to me and I want them to be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, the glory you gave me. For you loved me before the world was made. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you sent me. I made you known to them, and I will continue to do so, in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and so that I may also be in them. May we find wisdom in today's readings. Dear God, may your will be done on this earth through us and everything that you have given us. We thank you for being so gracious to create us in your image so that people in the whole world and other creatures could experience that togetherness in which you have created us. Yes, God, you say that you created us in your own image, but when you created even other creatures too, oh God, them too were created by a piece of you, your word. And therefore, we are together sharing that image of yours, God. And now we ask that you may empower us through the gift of our reflection on your word. In Christ's name we pray and say, Amen. This joke I'm going to tell is also a reflection. It's a joke that was afforded to me by a friend of mine. And it goes like this. 
Mr. and Mrs. Brown had two children, and those two children happened to be boys. One of the two was named Mind Your Own Business. And the other boy's name was Trouble. One day, these two boys decided to play hide and seek. Who doesn't love to play that game? So Trouble went to hide while mind your own business counted from one to 100. And after the count, mind your own business began looking for his brother. Then he went behind garbage cans he couldn't find him. He went into the bushes. He couldn't find him. And he looked around. He saw that there were so many cars in the neighborhood parked there. So he said, oh, perhaps he might have been in one of these cars. If not, maybe under one of them. So he started going around those cars and peeping into cars to see if his brother would be in one of those, and also looking under those cars. And it was at that time that a policeman approached him and asked him, what are you doing? Playing a game, the boy replied. What is your name? The policeman asked. Mind your own business. The boy answered. Then the police officer was not happy. He was very furious and decided to ask this question. Are you looking for trouble? Just guess what the answer was. The boy says, why, yes. I don't know what happened next. <laughs> Children ruined everything. That is not the theme of the reflection this morning. The theme is maintaining family togetherness, maintaining family unity, maintaining family harmony. And there are so many synonyms that we can all come up with. But let's go back to the picture that you see on the screen, which says children ring everything. This is a Canadian comedy TV series. You can watch it on CTV if you like to. And this series focuses on a young family of four. The father's name is James. The mother's name is Astrid. And they do have a four-year-old daughter by the name of Viv, whose older brother who is eight years old is called Felix. This young family, just like most of our families in this wonderful nation of Canada and all over the world, plans some fun activities. And it has its own way of expressing love and even enjoying every single moment that they have to celebrate their togetherness and even experience it. What I've come to learn watching some of the episodes is that although this young family enjoys every bonding opportunity they get, it is not always easy for them to keep that sense of unity, that sense of harmony, that sense of togetherness every time, every second. Is that familiar? As the title of the series suggests, the children in this series are guilty already. The title says, children ruin everything. They are already guilty. Why? I found out as I was watching that one time, 
the parent, James and Astrid, were trying to have a nice family dinner to celebrate a very special occasion. But their two young children made it very, very challenging. Another time, the young parent attempted to get some alone time and be able to just enjoy one another's company. Guess what happened? The kids kept getting in their way and they could not even have some alone time. Oh yes, children are guilty here because they ruin everything. But when I was watching some of the episodes closely, what I discovered is that they reveal something interesting. They reveal that children in the story or in the series are not the only guilty party here because their parents are guilty too. They are guilty in the sense that they always tend to hold on to their pre-kid life. At times they even become angry and maybe try to lash out at the children. And in so doing, I say, hmm, wait a moment. It seems parents are children too in this story because they are also trying to ruin things for their children who just want to be kids. So when interpreted within the context of all the events that take place in the series, the title, Children Win everything suggests that maintaining family togetherness, maintaining family harmony is not an easy task at all. After all, each person in the young family is unique. They each have different abilities needs and even opinions about different things. I think we are all familiar with this. When you tell a child, yeah, you need to put on these clothes. Recently, you know, I've seen that with Daniel, you know, you need to put on this. Oh no, it's not cold outside. I'm fine. Well, I say, oh, poor me, I was born in uh, the tropical area, but he wants to push back at times. He has an opinion about these clothes and we are all like that with different opinions in our families. So each person in this young family is totally different with different needs, different skills, and even different viewpoints, much like the family of God we are all a part of. This family of God that Paul talks about in his letter to his brethren in Ephesus. And Paul is saying to them and even to us today that we have all been given a variety of abilities, a variety of gifts and talent. And all these are meant to equip God's people for the work of ministry. We are all ministers. We are all empowered and even given gifts by God in order for us to promote the growth and even the maturity of our biological families, our neighborhoods, our communities, and even the whole extended family of God that we are all a part of. Despite unavoidable, Differences we have with other members of this extended family of God, maybe in the way we talk, in the way we look, in the way we think, in the way we act. Paul is urging us to live up to our heavenly calling. And he says this, in Ephesians 4, 1 to 3, when he says to his audience back there and then and even now, 
I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord. By the way, this letter was written about sometime in early 60s after Jesus, not 1960s, but 60s after Jesus. And around this time, Paul was facing house arrest in Rome. So prisoner here, literally speaking, is saying, I have been incarcerated for just trying to preach the good news of our Lord. I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. How do we live that life? Paul says we are to live it with lowliness and kindness, with patience, bearing with one another, not in hate, but in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit of God in the bond of peace. Let's go back to the verb to maintain there. We normally take our cars to different places. Why? Because they need to be serviced. We never made them, but other people have to make sure they are serviced. Even when we drive our cars on the road, we just go about running into people or into other people's homes. We maintain our cars also in the way we drive them so that we can have them for a long, long period of time and we do cherish them. So to maintain, it is to service, it is to conserve, it is to preserve. When we talk about maintaining unity here, we are talking about unity and harmony, not as a one-time event that we can graduate from, but rather a process. I can buy a car today, after two weeks, maybe the battery goes bad. I have to get another one, which maybe might look different. But all what I try to do is to just maintain that car so that it can take me from one place to another. Tomorrow might look different, but when I maintain the car, I'll be able to move around and get to my destination. So Paul is saying to us, we are called to maintain harmony, togetherness. Things will not always be great, but we have to use every tool that is available to us to just service that togetherness together with the Spirit of God that is already in each and every one of us. So harmony with other members of our biological families, of our community of faith, and of the family of God at large is very important in the sense that it reflects the unity between Jesus and one who sent him, who is none other than God and the father of Jesus and all of us, who, as Paul says, is above all, through all and in all. He doesn't say just in Christians or in Muslims or Jewish people, but in all people, regardless of where they come from and how they live their lives. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus made a very special request to this wonderful God of ours about his friends and followers throughout the ages and their future influence on the world. And he said, I pray that they may be one. This is what the version we read today is saying. But when we read the message version, it uses the verb to become. And the Greek verb that is used here is amy, which is the verb to be, the verb to exist. When we say we exist, that is really a process. That's why the message version of the Bible uses the verb to become. 
so that we may become one. We may continue to be on that journey. Father, may they be in us just as you are in me and I am in you. May they become one so that the world will believe that you sent me. So that the world will get to know that you sent me for a purpose and I was able to share the message with them and they will pass that message on to other people so that your light can shine in this entire world. When obstacles, problems arise among us, the Bible tells us that we are to respond. We, as members of the family of God, are to respond with humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Because this is the way to maintain and experience family togetherness. Happy Family Day to all of us. In the series, Children Win Everything, there is this time when the parent of Viv and Felix were not feeling well, but they had to throw a birthday party for the children. They did everything they had to do in order for that celebration to take place. This story is our story because even in our families, in our communities, we do have people who might not be feeling well, and yet they offer gifts that we ourselves, who feel like we are well, cannot offer. By God's grace, we can all do wonders from wherever place we may be founders, who found ourselves. Let's pray now.
Oh God, we come to you this morning to give you thanks for the gift of family. Each and every one of us belongs to a biological family. Some of us, we have been adopted into different families just the way you have come to adopt us through Jesus Christ into your family of grace and love. Yet tomorrow, we are going to be celebrating and remembering members of our families and celebrate that gift of family. We know that there are some who are hurting maybe because of what might have been done to them by a family member. We just lift all these people up and ask that you may be with them, O oh God, and help them understand that you are the source of all families and you are the best parent, the best sibling, the best neighbor that we can all have, both in times of peace and in times of trouble. And each time we are with you, O oh God, there is no word that comes from you that can hurt us. Everything that comes from you to us is just meant to build us up and help us see another day. We thank you. And as you teach us, O oh God, that your family transcends time and space, we thank you for those members of our family who are in your hand as we gather here. They have influenced our lives in so many ways. And now they have been promoted to go and serve at your headquarters, O oh God. We ask that they may continue to intercede for us as we continue on this journey of trying to grow into maturity. We thank you, God, because we know that they hear us and you also hear our prayers. The world we live in is filled with so many challenges, so many obstacles. There are places where they're experiencing the obstacle of disagreement. And we can see that even in politics here in our country. One side proposing something that makes sense. Another side just want to oppose it for the sake of opposing without looking at the common good. We pray for our nation, O oh God. We pray for all politicians to remember that they are where they are today because of us. We elected them not to serve their pockets or even other people give them more money than us, but to serve every single person who lives in this land. Give them wisdom and give us all wisdom because we are all ministers, O oh God, and we are called to use our freedom or freedoms in ways that do, don't oppress other people, in ways that do not tarnish the image we are created in, O oh God. We lift up some of the members of our church families and even biological families, oh God, who might not be feeling well this morning as we gather. Our prayer list is long, but we just want to take a moment to lift up Maya. We pray for her recovery from thyroid cancer surgery and our family too. We lift up the Knitterman family, whose mother and grandmother, Helen Cod, passed away. We lift up Mark Serafinshan and his family. We lift up Tom Lutzko and his family. We lift up Keith Griffith with his family. We also remember 
the millers, O God, at this time. Be with them and all those who are mourning at this time. We remember Dorothy Hayes and her family. And we also join the World Council of Churches in praying for the countries of France, Germany, and Monaco. They are far away from us, but they are close to our hearts because we are all together in that family of yours, O oh God. And now we take a moment to lift up the prayers from our heart and even lift up a name of anybody who is close to us and would like to remember in silence or aloud. O oh God, and parent of all of us, we ask all this in the mighty name of your love incarnate. Amen. Use the gifts which we offer to you, holy God, to restore the joy and despair, to give food to the hungry, to company to the lonely, and willing spirits to us, that we may have the love all. Amen.
Let us go into the world with God's gifts. We will perform God's works of mercy and life. Let us go into the world clothed with the power from on high. We will share Christ's grace, which gives life to everyone. Let us go as one family of faith and partnership. We will witness to the one spirit of hope and faith with all humility, gentleness, and patience bearing with one another in love in the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace amen Thank you. 